Народные республики Донбасса обратились к России с просьбой о помощи. Мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. After days on a razor's edge, Ukraine is now a nation at war. Russian troops are closing in on the capital. Their military vehicles have been filmed entering the city. And in the last few hours, multiple explosions have been reported. The Russian president says a military operation is now underway in eastern Ukraine. Ukraine has declared a state of emergency. The full-scale invasion that intelligence officials had been warning about for weeks is now underway. Two years have passed since Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a military operation in Ukraine during which there has been a continuous escalation of political and military tension worldwide. Turning now to the rising tensions between the U.S. and Russia over Ukraine. Today, President Biden got a debrief from French President Emmanuel Macron over his one, after I should say, after his one-on-one -on -one meeting with Vladimir Putin. Today, the U.S. sent in the cavalry. The second cavalry regiment out of Vilsack, Germany, loaded up this morning, bound for Romania, right along the Ukrainian border. It has resulted in thousands of deaths and injuries, in addition to thousands of refugees. This war is considered one of the largest conflicts in Europe since World War II. Afterwards, political alliances reshaped the European map due to the relative balance created by the existence of the Soviet Union as a major power, until the Soviet Union collapsed. This led to a state of instability in Europe. For example, War broke out in Czechoslovakia, one of the former communist countries. NATO intervened and bombed it. Here Putin is saying that Russia and Ukraine are one nation. Ukraine and Russia have a shared history, as Ukraine was part of the Russian Empire in the 18th and 19th centuries. But it gained independence for a brief period after the Bolshevik Revolution, led by Vladimir Lenin, which overthrew the empire. Only to later return as a founding state in the Soviet Union. With the end of World War II, two superpowers emerged shaping the contemporary world with two poles, the Soviet Union, which embraced communist ideology and socialist economy, and the West, which adopted liberal ideology and capitalist economy. The deepening ideological and economic differences laid the groundwork for the division between the socialist and capitalist blocs. In 1949, Western European countries with Canada and the United States formed the Military Alliance North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Proceed to the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty. A few years later, these countries formed the Warsaw Pact, and the world remained in this configuration until the Soviet Union finally collapsed and the United States to confront the Soviet Union, and the post-Soviet republics began to demand openness an end to communist governments, and a shift towards liberal governments and independence. The Soviet Union was divided into 15 republics, including Russia, which suffered from political and economic instability, becoming weaker. With the collapse, the Warsaw Pact also ended. But NATO remained strong, and even began to expand by incorporating new countries from the former Soviet republics, moving closer to Russian borders. In 1999, three former Soviet republics joined the alliance, Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. For Russia, the eastward expansion is considered a violation of the agreement reached by Gorbachev with the United States, where the reunification of Germany would occur in exchange for NATO not expanding eastward. Today we proudly welcome Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia. We welcome them into the ranks of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. In 2004, George Bush announced the addition of seven new countries to the alliance. Russia considered this announcement a threat to its national security. Belarus, Georgia, 
and Ukraine were the last former Soviet republics that had not yet joined. However, Georgia and Ukraine had long declared their intention to join the alliance. 2004 was a pivotal year. The pro-Russian candidate, Viktor Yanukovych, was declared the winner of the presidential the election in Ukraine. Crash with police, with hundreds of thousands protesting the results of the election and calling for a new vote. They protested against the results of the presidential election, pitting their candidate, the West-leaning challenger Viktor Yushchenko, against the pro-Moscow prime minister Viktor However, Yanukovych. allegations of vote rigging sparked protests known as the Orange Revolution. The vote was annulled, and a rerun was held in 2005. The pro-Western candidate, Viktor Yushchenko was declared the winner. Yushchenko promised to steer Kyiv away from the Kremlin's influence towards NATO and the European Union. In 2012, relations between the European Union and Ukraine crystallized through the association agreement between Ukraine and the European Union and the comprehensive and deep free trade agreement. However, the Ukrainian government suspended preparations for signing the association agreement on November 21, 2013 during the presidency of Viktor Yanukovych, who was aligned with Russia. This led to the emergence of the Euromaidan movement in support of the European Union and the outbreak of the Ukrainian Revolution in February 2014. After several months of protests, nearly 100 demonstrators were killed. The parliament then impeached the president, who fled to Russia. Since then, Ukraine has sought integration into the European Union. However, in return, there have been pro-Russian disturbances in the eastern part of the country, opposing the Euromaidan movement and the new interim Ukrainian government. Russia was losing its influence over Ukraine during this period. As a response, Russia annexed Crimea, and in April 2014, pro-Russian separatists seized control of the Donetsk region in eastern Ukraine. Amidst these tense atmospheres between the two countries, presidential elections were held in May 2014, in which the Ukrainian businessman, Petro Poroshenko, who was close to the West, won. He stated that he would seek to strengthen relations with the European Union and restore peace in the troubled eastern regions of Ukraine. With tensions escalating between the two neighbors, the West began to move to support Ukraine. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced in October 2014 sanctions against Russian and Ukrainian companies and individuals involved in the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula and the armed separatist movement in Donetsk. Having played the role of president in a TV show, Volodymyr Zelensky is now on course to make that role a reality, winning an overwhelming majority of votes cast on Sunday. Thank you to my parents for their support and for living through all of this. Thanks to my team for their strength and stamina. Had my wife heard all of the things that were said about me in this campaign, then perhaps she would never. In July 2019, Ukrainian actor Volodymyr Zelensky won the presidency by a landslide vote. Six months into his tenure, President Joe Biden of the United States appealed for support for Kyiv's accession to NATO. Zelensky's appeal was followed by actions against Russia-backed opposition in February 2021, as his government imposed sanctions on Viktor Medvedchuk, the leader of the opposition, and a key Kremlin ally in Ukraine. Moscow moved militarily in March 2021, deploying forces near the Ukrainian border, then withdrew them, claiming it was just a training exercise. Satellite images showed a buildup of Russian forces on the border with Ukraine, raising fears of a potential invasion. Zelensky announced that Russia had deployed 100,000 troops in the border region with his country and moved significant numbers of tanks and heavy equipment. These serious moves by the Russian side on the Ukrainian border hastened a meeting between US President Joe Biden and his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, via a video call in December 2021. Putin clearly stated his demands for NATO to return to its borders and end expansion to the east, while Biden threatened severe economic sanctions if Russia invaded Ukraine. In a call with Zelensky in January 2022, Biden promised that the United States and its allies would act decisively if Russia risked invading Ukraine. In response, Moscow moved its forces towards northern Ukraine on January 17, 2022 under the pretext of conducting joint maneuvers with Belarus. On February 10, 2022, Moscow rejected American statements alleging a Russian invasion of Ukraine, accusing the West of misinformation. On the following day, the United States decided to send an additional 3,000 troops to Poland, 
to join the 1,700 troops already there, while the Kyiv City Council approved a plan to evacuate residents in case of an attack. On February 21, 2022, Putin escalated his response to U.S. and Western statements and movements by recognizing the republics of Donetsk and Luhansk, prompting Biden and some Western countries to impose a series of sanctions on Russia. On February 24, 2022, Putin signaled the start of a military operation in Ukraine, urging Ukrainian soldiers to lay down their arms immediately and return home. Since the beginning of the invasion, Russian forces have seized vast areas of the southern province of Kherson. Then, on February 26, 2022, they began to expand their attacks to include all regions. The war is a catastrophe for Ukraine, but the war will also be a catastrophe for Russland. From now on, year for year, more than 2% of the Bruttoinland products in our defense invest. Berlin moved swiftly to lift restrictions on its military institution and shifted its policy, announcing an increase in military spending. In late January 2023, the war entered a new phase with Western countries announcing the deployment of tanks to Ukraine. Leading this effort, the United States declared its intention to send dozens of its famous Abrams tanks. Additionally, Germany approved the deployment of Leopard tanks, while Britain was the first to announce the deployment of its modern Challenger tanks. And Finland, which shares over 1,300 kilometers of land border with Russia, officially joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Moscow stated that Finland's joining NATO increases the risks of confrontation and warned that NATO reinforces its anti-Russian tendencies. As a sign of hinting at expanding the confrontation, Moscow said that Belarus, a neighboring and close ally of Russia, has received Iskander M systems capable of carrying conventional and nuclear missiles. It also noted that some Belarusian attack aircraft have become capable of launching strikes with nuclear weapons equipped equipment. Putin explicitly threatened in response to Berlin and the United States, supplying tanks to Kyiv, considering it an extremely serious decision that would raise the conflict to a new level of confrontation, accusing the Westerners of following a logic of constant escalation. Until now, the war is still ongoing, and tensions have escalated between global powers. What is considered most dangerous is the leak of a German document warning of the outbreak of a third world war by 2025. 